Hi, in this slide, uh, I want to talk about 5Y analysis to get to root root causes of, uh, of uh, opportunities. And then what do we do? You can actually Google uh, 5Y analysis. And the idea is we start off with a problem. We say, well, what, why, why is this the way it is? Well, because of A is because of B. And you say, all right, well, then why is B existing? Well, actually, B is fed by C and D. Well, why are C and D contributing to B? Well, because of D, E, and F. So it's a fishbone diagram. Work your way back to the, the, the final answer. Where it's like, well, just because that is, and that's, that's the root cause. So when we do, when we look at a losing customer and we look at the losing items and we go down and say, well, why... Why is this guy buying uh, the equivalent of paper clips, two paper clips twice a week? That's a hundred line items, averaging you know three dollars per line item. The margin percent is pretty good, but you know we have six dollars cost per pick in the warehouse, so we're losing four dollars every time we pick it. Well, what's going on on their end? They when they say we need to buy two paper clips just in time. What does it take for them to do that, then receive it and put it where it is for they're going to before they use it in a day and a half on a just-in-time basis? I, you know, actually I don't buy paper clips in my desk on a just-in-time basis. I just buy like a box of them and they last a long time. So, um, and then let's go look at uh, the transaction ranking reports. And then you go to the bottom and we find out that we're losing uh, our average cost is a hundred dollars, and we find that there are emergency rush orders for two paper clips. So not only are we killing ourselves delivering paper clips on a just-in-time basis, but the customer has downtime because they don't have paper clips. They're saying, race, get them out, out here type of thing. Well, what we find out generally is, is the story kind of gets down to what is the gross margin dollar, not margin percent, gross margin dollar per variable activity cost unit. So when we look at the gross margin dollar per pick, if it's a dollar per pick and it costs us six, we're losing five bucks in each pick. I don't care if the margin percent's 100%, we're still losing $5 per pick. When we look at dollars, margin dollars per invoice because of all the paperwork costs in the back office of three-way match on both sides of the fence, both partners, if we've got paperwork involved in trade credit, are, are spending $40 or more just on paperwork alone. So we need enough margin dollars to clear that hurdle. If we add in, besides the paperwork stopping a truck, that's a fixed cost or a fixed variable cost, if you will. So now we need even more margin dollars to clear the cost of picking paperwork and stopping the truck. If we say, oh, but we want a rep to call on them 12 times a year or 24 times a year or 50 times a year if they're really big, what's the rep cost per call? Well, that means we have to have a lot of margin dollar per customer per month to, to, to more than uh, offset the cost of the call, the stops of the truck, and so forth. So we start to see that this gross margin dollar per activity unit cost is, is key. Another thing we realize is the law of reciprocal activity costs between channel partners. Whatever our costs are on our side of the fence, our channel partner really has to mirror those costs more or less. If we have humans talk to their humans, their humans cost money. If we have paperwork to fuss around with, they have paperwork to fuss around with. If we have to do picking, they have to do order and receiving. So the if we went to our customers or suppliers and said, do you have uh, cost to buy from us or cost to sell to us, cost to serve math, they might say no, but we say we do. And we have half of the same of the other side of the coin, so we can just use our math to look sort of guess that your math is somewhat similar, and now we can have a different expanded conversation about how do we work together to change the one size fits all process that we've been doing to do business together, in some cases dysfunctionally on a lose lose basis. Um, so when we work with our biggest lose lose customers to lower our cost to serve we'll be lowering the customer's total procurement cost. Um, and if we can lower our CTS and their TPC, we also make room for lowering our price. I mean, basically that's what Walmart has taught the world. That's what the drug wholesale channel taught us in the 80s, which is you can go from 14% margin of the warehouse to six, 7% of the warehouse and actually make a higher return on investment because you go from 
one third share of customer to 100% share of customer, and you take out people, paperwork, and so forth because of automated relationships. Um, so that's the journey we start to go on if we have good line item profit analytics. Um, so our goal really is we don't want to, you know, have lose lose customers. We'd like to have win-win service value chain solutions, stories, conversations, and in a sense, get out of the bid, bark, and buy. I'm trying to beat you up for a lower price, and we're trying to sneak the margin percent up on the other side of the coin. Get out of that game and just say, let's get married, and then let's work together to free up a lot of friction so we can both win uh, going forward. So that's the story of 5Y analysis. Thank you.